Hi, everyone. It's Erin from the Azure Data Studio team. And today I have Chino with me because we had so much to say about connections last time that we didn't get through it all. So stay tuned because you're going to want to hear what we've got to cover today. Hey, Chino, how are you? I'm doing very well. <laughs> Good. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, we had some stuff that we hit last time about connections and we <laughs> didn't get through everything because apparently we have a lot to say. So um, I wanted to come back and, and kind of cover a few things that we missed. Um, so if I remember, we need to hop back into the connection pane, right? And there were a couple things that you wanted to talk about here related to encryption. Uh, some changes that we have, right? Previously, encrypt used to be a Boolean, just tr having true and false, but now yep. it also supports strict mode. So we have made true as mandatory and then false as an optional. Um, we are also now using true as a default, which means mandatory is now the new default. Um, but strict encryption is mainly supported by SQL Server 22 onwards. So that's what we are also supporting in Azure Data Studio now with version 1.42. Right. 1 um, so yeah, and again, 1.42 1. came out in uh, Mar Mar on March 22nd. So that's where folks will see this functionality uh, as well as obviously in an insider. And then there were a couple things to note on the advanced tab as well, right? Um, yes. Related to right timeout stuff. Yeah, so previously we only used to have a connection timeout uh, available here where you can configure the timeout setting when you're uh, basically just making a new connection. Uh, but now we've added command timeout, which also covers the timeout that you want to uh, configure for your queries that you want to run using the connections. So it will apply to every query universally and you can just configure it. Um, by default, it's 30 seconds as same for connection timeout. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's the new setting that we have added here. And the connection timeout, changing that is good, for example, when you have like serverless, right? And your yes. database might be paused. Yes, that's okay. definitely true. Um, so users should definitely consider configuring these options if they hit into timeout issues or anything else around that. Perfect, perfect. And then the other one, which I would love for you to talk about, I don't have it filled in here, but this host name in certificate. Yes. So this is the setting, again, uh, applies to encryption. Um, mm -hmm. So as we have enabled strict encryption, uh, we also added support for adding host name and certificate. So uh, where in, in configurations where the server name that you provide um, is, for example, an IP address or something which is not a server name, which is also available in the certificate, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it needs to match uh, when you're basically uh, connecting to the server. In those cases, you can actually provide host name and certificate in the connect in this connection property, and that host name here uh, will be used for uh, validating your certificate and giving you a connection with encryption enabled. Right. So this applies to both mandatory and strict encryption modes. Um, yep. And this can this can be configured by users. Great. And we did update the documentation to include that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, we could definitely um, share that link as well. And then what we didn't even get to talk about last time was everything over here on the under the Azure view, right? <laughs> we, <Yeah>. completely, <laughs> really, we really didn't have time to get to that. Um, right. So so what I want to, there's a couple of things that I know you wanted to point out, but I've got two different subscriptions here. My, my passport one is one that I've had for a very long time. And then I have one which is specific to Microsoft. And Underneath my Microsoft one, just something that I want to point out here, um, is that I have my I have multiple subscriptions, but I've filtered it using this filter icon so that I only see the ones that I really use most frequently. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one that um, we've got a couple of SQL databases in here, right? And what uh, what do you think is important for folks to know within the context of this view? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first thing I can mention is that uh, we have basically improved the filtering of resources here. Mm -hmm. So we've also added, um, if you scroll a little bit down, you'll find dedicated SQL pools right, and right, then right. Azure Synapse Analytics. So yep. your resources that correspond to those will be available here. Mm -hmm. And the SQL databases and SQL servers are available um, as well. And uh, we also allow basically just fetching these properties directly into the connection dialog. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is that click that connect icon when you right. hover over this resource. Yeah. Yep. So and right here. when you do yep. that, 
Yeah. So you will be able to fill in your connection options directly mm -hmm. and uh, right away, go ahead and start a connection. So yeah, right. there you go. Yep. And it automatically opens right to here and I can go ahead and um, there's a ton of things that I can do right from here. But uh, new query is probably what most folks use a lot. I know that just based on the, the telemetry that we have, that folks spend a lot of time in OE or going into new query. But something right. that you showed me the other day that I didn't even know was that right from this view, I can right click and just say new query. And yes. that opens that new query window. I don't even have to actually go through that connection process. Right. I mean, it does that in the background, right? Yes. And you can always expand your resources directly in this view as well. Um, mm -hmm. So right here, you can see all your tables and everything that you need. And yep. um, you can further. basically start your OE processes directly from this view. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, those, I think, were the things that we missed last time that we wanted to make sure to highlight, right? That um, we've got improvements in the connection pane that are now available in 1.42, as well as within our Azure, we've got the dedicated SQL pools and Azure Synapse Analytics and mm -hmm. connecting to those resources and, and kind of seeing what objects you have and querying is really, really easy just from that pane. Did I miss anything? Yeah. No, <laughs> you covered it wonderfully. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for making time to come back today and chat a little bit more. And I know that there's still more that you're working on in the connection uh, space. So um, we can't wait to see what comes next. No, super excited. And thanks for having me today. Thanks, Gina.